Hi everyone, I'm Tracy, your host for Chandler's channel. And today's session is what I've called topic of the week in the past, but I am changing to officially White Hawk's Wisdom. So White Hawk's Wisdom today will be on highly sensitive people or shortened to HSPs. So if that's what you're here for, please stay tuned. I'll jump in with Spirit Guide uh, White Hawk in just a moment. Last week, I didn't post the topic of the week, which was on highly sensitive people, uh, simply because I had some challenges with uh, my children being home and so on and so forth, and my dog. I was taping it, and then he decided to uh, start barking as I was taping it. So, and uh, there was no real way I could um, praise it. <laughs> What's that called? Shorten it. Uh, because when I do these videos, right, the, the good thing is it's channeling, so I have to just go with the flow. There's no way you can take bits and pieces and put it together because then um, it really isn't authentic, is it really then? So that was the previous week. Uh, the next topic of the week next week is our monthly reading on September. I uh, can't wait to, uh, to uh, channel that because the previous month of August, if you haven't listened to, uh, was about uh, the Knights of Camelot and the Knights of the Templar's Cross arriving and staying and playing. So uh, please do listen to that if you haven't had a chance. Now, let's jump in about highly sensitive people. It was uh, Elaine Aaron, A-R-O-N, who coined the term highly sensitive people, and I believe it was back in 1996 uh, that she, she founded that there are 20% uh, of these people in the population. Uh, highly sensitive people are people who process information around them uh, at a higher rate than other people. So they're more aware of everything, uh, the energy, uh, so that a lot of them can be empaths. I'm not, um, I am experienced in being a highly sensitive people because I am a highly sensitive person, but I can't speak of all traits that she's come on. She is the expert, as is there a Dr. Ted Zeff, who is on Twitter, and I do follow him. So if you follow me on Twitter, you can follow him, you can find him in my uh, follow uh, following of Dr. Ted Zeff. And uh, Dr. Elaine Aaron has an actual is she a doctor? Ooh, not sure. I think so. Um, who has a quiz you can take to see if you are a highly sensitive person or if you're questioning if you are or someone around you is. Uh, but you know, we're 20% of the population, that's a lot because if you think at Christmas time, 20% uh, of sales, 25% of sales come through at Christmas time and uh, you know, businesses don't, uh, don't take that lightly. So we're out there and uh, it doesn't mean we're special, it just means we process information differently, our electronic makeup is different our nervous system we're very um, we're very sensitive to energy uh, meaning noise stimuli um, so on and uh, so forth everything from tastes and textures and food to the clothes we wear that you know we might find itchy like if you find me I wear a lot of jersey <laughs> like I'm all about comfort um, and, and you'll probably find that with a lot of highly sensitive people so I will uh, remember try to remember to post uh, Elaine Aaron's um, website in the description box down below so you can have a, a look or a listen. She has a couple of books out, so does Dr. Ted Zeff on this. Um, so please check those out. But let's go in and let's see <clears throat> what uh, White Hawk has to say on highly sensitive people in this week's White Hawk's Wisdom. Indeed, he says. Highly sensitive people. What can we say about highly sensitive people that has already not been said before? And he kind of ribs me because uh, we've done a few videos on this that I just haven't published. He goes, <laughs> indeed. But I'm happy to come and, and speak on this subject for this little one, he says. A highly sensitive person is indeed a highly vibrating person. He or she is a person who vibrates at a higher rate of frequency than the rest of us. So indeed then, they do, 
they do process the information at a higher rate than the rest of us, so their uh, sponges, he says, get filled at a faster rate than the rest of us. And so these people need to empty their sponges more often, he says, because their saturation point occurs faster. And if they do not empty their sponge, then what happens is these people get bogged down in um, uh, emotional meltdowns, he says. And so then it, it can come across as them being lazy, depressed, uh, riddled with anxiety. <coughs> You name the emotion, he says, and it is them. For you see, they process other people's emotions because they soak up their emotions and their energy. Therefore, that is why their sponge needs to be emptied often. Indeed, these people cannot go into a shopping mall, he says, without soaking up every aspect of the shopping mall. The smells, the scents, the hairstyles, he says, the lighting, the fashion, the textures, the flooring. He says, if you go into a shopping mall and you look, and like I'm in the mall now, and I'm sort of, if I'm in Sears, say I'm in Sears, and uh, I see the bright, bright lights, and I can feel the atmosphere in, in that part of the the store and I can feel the the air quality whether it's stuffy or whether it's light and I, I see the sales clerks behind uh, or behind their counters or in front of their counters and I'm aware of their haircut their color um, what clothes they have on what color is their lipstick they have on what they smell like he says indeed and that is the difference between a non highly a non um, a non HSP. Sorry, I'm helping him here, and a highly sensitive person. Um, he says, indeed, for you will go in there and you will recognize every aspect, every facet of what is going on in that place. It does not matter where you are; you will know what is going on in that place. And it's not because you want to be aware of it he says there is a difference of going in and saying okay i'm going to be aware of this 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 and this but it is the difference is you go in and you just are automatically aware of it you don't have to think of being aware of it you just are automatically aware of it and that is the difficulty because not only are you managing uh, what it is your actions are while you're there um, uh, and all the feelings in, in your body that you feel, but you're managing the feelings in your body that are there from everybody else as well, and, and the whole atmosphere going on around you, plus the tasks that you have at hand of why you have arrived at this place. He says, so imagine why you are so tired when, when, when you are in the mall and you arrive home from a shopping trip, he says, because you have just soaked up every aspect of that mall, of that beingness. So you come home and you are just saturated, saturated with everything, he says. And so you sit there like you are completely full and zombified. It's like you have now become zombified because you have nothing left in you to give. And so now you have to start the process of eliminating or processing all that stuff. And so the easiest way to do that for you is to rest. And I see myself in bed, he goes, but that doesn't always work, does it, Tracy? And I go, no. He goes, for you are so tired, you are so overwhelmed that you are exhausted that you can't rest, you can't sleep. So what you need to do is you need to get up, he says, and you need to pat yourself down. And he's showing me, and he's doing like where you, where you um, swipe away the emotions of other people, the energy that's come into your, to your, to your being, right? And he goes, indeed, he says, one can see it very much as, as uh, smudging, he says, or one can see it as just getting rid of the other people's emotions out of uh, your bubble. He says, there is that that one can do. 
This is another very effective tool, is to get yourself in, out into nature for a long period of time. No, not to run, not to jog, not to exercise, but to simply be out in nature. To simply sit in nature and watch nature. And he's showing me a time where I sat out in a park and I was in, by the water and I was just watching the geese and I was just watching, um, sorry, I'm just going to do something here for a second. Sorry, I had something came up on my screen. Um, um, yeah, so I was watching the geese and I was, and I was just hanging out in nature and I stayed there for almost two hours and then I literally heard a ding inside my head, almost like, you know, when the dryer goes off and says, okay, it's done, it's over with. And it was its way of telling me, uh, you're done, you're, um, you've emptied your sponge. And he goes, indeed, he says, that is a most effective, he says, example of uh, how to empty your sponge. It does take a while, it cannot be uh, immediate sometimes, depending upon how full your sponge is, he says. Um, but that is a very effective way of getting rid of um, the energy of others and all that you have seen. Another effective way, he says, is to simply walk out in nature with yourself, he says, not with others. We need to spend time alone at this time, he says. For to have the energy of others around us would be complicated and just um, continue to overwhelm us. So we need to isolate ourselves, he says, and we need to get out in nature as some of the, the biggest examples. And water is another very uh, effective tool, he says, soothing music, he says aromatherapy. Uh, these are all very effective tools to help you to empty your sponge, my children. And so to reiterate highly sensitive people is that they are a more sensitive being and they are more aware and indeed it does affect their nervous system in a very um, it does affect their nervous system in a very um, uncomplimentary uh, way so with these ones we need to take care of their their mental health he says we need to take care of their physical health and we need to understand that these people, these children, he says, uh, need to re uh, rest more often. And we need, them, we need to allow to give them the time to rest more often. And to not be judgmental. To not call them lazy. For they are not where they have these special qualities, these high qualities that we need in individuals to help the world to evolve, to help the world to prosper, he says, at a better rate of frequency. So do not be dismay or do not dismay at these individuals. Move forward in these, with these individuals knowing that they are here to help us raise the consciousness of a planet here today. So what else can I say on these people, he says, other than they are, that they are highly sensitive people that are required on this earth to help us move forward in our humanness, in our beingness, on our journey here today. So God bless here today, little ones, as you move forward on your journey, either as a non-HSP, he says, or as a HSP. But do not judge each other, little ones. Do not judge each other. For we are all part of the big scheme in the end. God bless children, he says. Play nicely with each other. So that is White Hawk's wisdom on the topic of uh, highly sensitive people. Um, I do hope you will join us for our weekly reading next week, which might not fall until the Tuesday because we are in a uh, holiday mode this weekend, uh, the long weekend, Labor Day weekend for us here. So if I don't see you Monday, I will see you Tuesday. Subscribe, it's free, like, comment, be kind, keep it clean, and share, and we will see you very soon. God bless. I'm Tracy for a Chandler's channel.